kitty. Look who's here. All our fans are out there. Well, like many other people, I jumped on the bandwagon and bought one of these Marbles GI Jackknives. Um, and here's what it says on the box here. Uh, G.I. Jack. The Marvel's G.I. Jack design pays tribute to the original World War II G.I. knife, one of the most recognizable knives in modern history. This two-bladed jackknife features a sheep foot blade and a can opener cap lifter blade, as well as a lanyard bail. And, uh, well... This is what the knife looks like. I think plenty of people have seen it with the uh, the diamond studded uh, uh, what stainless steel handle and the U.S. stamped in there. You got the bail over here, and then the two blades, which we have seen. Uh, this is, I guess, the uh, cap lifter can opener. I have not tried it as a cap lifter. Does look like it would be a functional can opener. Uh, and then you have the sheep foot blade on here. And, uh, well, that doesn't look anything like the uh, World War II jackknife that I got. So here's my World War II issue jackknife. Notice uh, carbon steel liners and back springs and everything. A bone handle. Got a clevis over here. Um, steel bolsters going on. The secondary blade was broken at some point. It was a pin blade. It was not a uh, uh, can opener, a cap lifter, or anything like that. It was just a uh, pin blade. And the main blade was actually a spear blade. And this was the, um, the Navy Jack. Actually, it was the number 41 J4 Navy Jack. And that was the general utility jackknife that was used by the uh, Navy and the Marines. Uh, the only other World War II utility knife that I'm familiar with, uh, utility knife, there are several other knives that were used, but general utility knife would have been a knife like this, which is uh, your four-blade camp-style knife. And you see, you've got your long screwdriver cap lifter there, and then can opener on this side and then uh, your punch over here and again your main spear blade these were the knives that uh, were being issued to GIs at the time again uh, carbon steel throughout carbon steel bolsters uh, carbon steel clevis pens everything um, and bone handles now sometime around 1944 they did start uh, putting steel slabs on the side uh, for knives being issued in the Pacific. And this is similar to a knife that was issued in the Pacific, but not a knife that was issued to the GI or U.S. servicemen. It was issued to uh, basically uh, Commonwealth forces, so, so British and Commonwealth forces. They had a knife similar to this that was issued to them. And so this is the... Uh, Original, it would have been an MIL-J knife uh, back then, the uh, uh, military jackknife that was designed for uh, U.S. Navy and Marine Corps forces and also for U.S. Army forces in the Pacific. Uh, and this came out around 1944. And again, you see, I'm sorry, long screwdriver cap lifter on this side the new modern safety can opener on this side, the main blade, and um, the uh, punch. Uh, and at that time, they were actually back to using brass liners in it. And this knife was designed to replace these knives um, because, well, the mildew and everything was just causing them to rust a lot. So. They were going with uh, the stainless steel sides and everything so that they'd have a knife that was a little bit more robust to deal with the, uh, um, well, the Pacific theater of uh, operations. It was just rough on knives, uh, mildew, rot, and everything else. It just bad all around for them. So that's how these knives came about. But 
as far as I know, the U.S. Army never had a knife like this. Like I said, this is something um, that is a, if anything, it would be like a fantasy knife uh, to call it a G.I. Jack. However, like I mentioned, it is very similar to something that British and Commonwealth forces used. And that knife was actually known as, um, uh, at the time, I think they often called it a Burma knife. Uh, also an oil the joints knife. They still call it an oil the joints knife. But this is closer to the uh, the um, one piece and two piece clasp knives that were uh, developed around 1944, around the same time that these knives were coming out. Um, possibly a little bit before these knives even. Um, these knives might have been inspired by the Burma knives. Um, and uh, that was through the British forces fighting in Burma, and they also needed a knife that would not fall apart through mildew, rust, and everything else. And well, let's take a look at what those look like. Now, a lot of people are very familiar with the uh, the British Army three-piece clasp knife, which is a, a marlin spike type knife that has the, the big spike on the back side, and then the, the two blades up on top, the one being a uh, can opener and the other one being the typical sheep foot blade up there and um, many of them had a big light handle but even these were falling apart in the jungle. Uh, the British did not only use a three-piece clasp knife they also had one and two-piece clasp knives and this is uh, an example of one of their two-piece clasp knives. Um, I don't have a one-piece clasp knife like this but you see it's basically the same knife the only difference is it does not have the marlin spike on the back because it was not always needed and if you notice at the front here uh, the middle bolster or middle uh, liner is uh, pushed forward a bit and it turns into a uh, screwdriver tip um, they also had that on the uh, three-piece knives so that is what this is it's actually a screwdriver tip it is not something to add support to the blade when it is all the way opened or anything like that. It might do that, but that's not the intention of it. It's actually a screwdriver tip. And um, like I said, and the other blade over here is uh, your tin cutter or can opener, whatever you want to call it. The uh, British uh, came out with a lighter version of this using um, basically stainless steel covers. So the, uh, they basically remove the covers and, and you now have the outside liner being a thicker uh, metal and that is acting as the actual cover to the knife. And so you end up with a, um, a two-piece knife like this or a one-piece knife like so. Uh, and these were the uh, Burma knives. The uh, one-piece knife, this is a, definitely a modern version, and it's also a civilian version of it by Rogers. Um, but that's all you have with it. And uh, a sheep foot blade. And the two-piece knife, just like this, except now, as you can tell, it's got a thicker uh, scale on the side. Uh, this one is dating from 1980, but it is very much just like the ones that you would have seen in 1944 or 43. And you see the arrow there, that means that is the knife that would have uh, been an issue item for the uh, military. That's the, uh, the mark on there. Do I have it on here too? You'll see it there, the little arrow. That means that it was approved by the Ministry of Defense and was an actual issued a knife. And you see there, sheep foot blade and the big old honking uh, can opener. And notice the shape of this can opener, really not designed to be a cap lifter. And that is probably the closest knife you're going to find to this knife here. So let's compare these two knives and then see where we can go from there. Okay, put it this way and this way and let's get the box out of the way. And now we have the two knives. And first things first, if you notice, um, the marbles 
is going to be a wider knife. It is not the same thickness at all. It is definitely uh, almost the entire width of one of its um, scales. Maybe even a little more than, yeah, like the entire width of one of its scales. It has a, uh, some people have said that this will not work as a can opener. I'm sorry, as a uh, screwdriver. I disagree with you. Um, while it could be uh, filed down a little bit and be a little more useful, I actually um, fit this into the little screws that hold a, um, a light cover or a cover for an electrical uh, outlet. This went right into that screw. It fit perfectly and I was able to turn it with no problem. So uh, if you're having an issue, you, you do have to line it up perfectly, but if you are having an issue, I would just get um, get a little Dremel tool and try and file that down a little bit and work it into a proper screwdriver for yourself. But it will work as a screwdriver. Um, besides the width, if you notice here also, and this is really the bigger difference is, let's get it up here and we can compare it that way. It is quite a bit shorter. I'll actually put the dimensions in, um, in um, some photos at the end, but you can see it is quite a bit shorter. It looks like almost a uh, half inch shorter or so. And it also has a smaller clevis, um, but a rounder clevis. So um, might be easier to snap something into there. I guess you could also bend it and get it to be a little more long and loopy like this. Um, clevis does not move as smoothly as I would like it to. Uh, and part of that is probably because of the texturing on the handle. Um, does the texturing help with grip? Um, maybe. I don't know. You can definitely feel it. But surprisingly, your hand does not slip that much on this either. Um, Blade-wise, there's your sheep foot on this, blade, on this knife. And, uh, well, here's your sheep foot here. Um, Surprisingly, the length difference is not that much. See that? Let's get them right up to each other. Let's do it this way. That's usually the way I do it. If we can get them to do that right there. Hard to tell, but you can see that. There, there's what you can see. Um, the uh, one on the, um, the Burma knife is definitely longer. The two-piece clasp knife for, out of, uh, I think this one was actually made in Australia, maybe. I don't know. In any case, you can see that it is a little bit longer than um, the one on the marbles knife. The good thing is, is at least on mine, there's no big uh, marbles mark on the blade. I don't know if other people have marbles on the blade or not. Glad it doesn't. This has the half stop. Um, Smoky Mountain Knife Works just loves half stops. Oh, there's marbles on there. Um, this knife does not have a half stop. Does not need it. This is a lazy half up at the top, which is what you find on a lot of knives. Um, this, uh, I really need to oil the joints. A much more substantial can opener. You can see that right away. Um, will they both work as a can opener? I think they will. This uh, is a little thicker, but it does have a good sharp edge there. Uh, and the reason they've kept it straight there is probably so it will work as a cap lifter. I will try it right now to see if it'll work as a cap lifter. Now this is going to be a little problematic, so it better work. This is the last beer in the house. Uh, and uh, the first thing I noticed when I picked up the two-piece clasp knife, I will not pop it with this one, but uh, it looks like uh, you could, in theory, use the can opener as a bottle opener on this one also. Uh, it, that's really good purchase. It's grabbing it real tight. So I could, in theory, open a bottle with the uh, uh, can opener on the two-piece clasp knife. But we're testing the marbles here. And uh, 
what I've noticed is, see how flat that is? And I've got it right on one of the points on the crown. And uh, I feel a really good purchase on there. So I think it's going to work just fine. And yeah, it will. But <laughs> yeah, it's going to mutilate the uh, cap. So there you go. It will definitely open a bottle, but you're going to be cutting through the cap on the top because, uh, well, you got a really good uh, sharp edge there. So see how sharp that edge looks? So it cut right through the cap. Um, I will say it this way. It is a completely functional cap lifter. It's not the best cap lifter you're going to find on a knife. But uh, you cannot say it will not open a bottle because it will definitely take the cap off of a bottle. Okay, so my final takeaway on the knife. Well, I tested it by cutting it through um, some cardboard and some paper and stuff. And the, and the knife proved pretty sharp. Um, typical sharpness that I expect from marbles. Um, you can see here, it's tight. It doesn't wobble a lot. It doesn't wobble at all, actually. So it's pretty uh, firm in the uh, handle there. Um, line up. It's okay by my standards. I do have a very slight wobble in the can opener cap lifter. Um, nothing dramatic. I already talked about the, uh, the clevis. It's a little tight. That's good and bad because that means you don't have to worry about that happening and, it coming, and your blade coming down on it, which will happen with these knives if the uh, clevis gets in the way. Um, and I have actually used it to loosen screws, so it will loosen screws. Um, could it be a little thinner? Perhaps, uh, but like I said, it fit perfectly into uh, screws used to uh, uh, for the covers on electrical outlets and light switches and light plates and stuff like that. So I have uh, no real issue with this acting as a screwdriver. It, it seemed to work fine with me. Um, historical accuracy, I, I give it... Um, uh, oh, well, you know, that's like the uh, the old four Pinocchios. This is not a GI jackknife. Um, it sort of resembles the uh, two-piece class knife used by the, uh, by the British and Commonwealth forces at the end of World War II. But um, the only way um, a GI would have been using one of these knives is if they were in Australia at one time and, and picked one of them up there, uh, which could very well happen. There were plenty of uh, uh, American forces that were in Australia at one time or another, or if they were fighting alongside of uh, Commonwealth forces or something. Uh, as I said, these were really the Burma knives. Uh, the British were fighting um, a lot more on the mainland than the Americans were. The Americans were dealing off there in the uh, Pacific uh, so it wasn't like we were uh, running into each other a lot, but we were running into each other. So yeah, American soldiers might have ended up with uh, some two-piece class knives in their pocket, but they definitely, uh, as far as I know, were not being issued any knife similar to this. The closest thing to being issued to uh, uh, American GIs at the time would have been um, this knife here. Uh, but still, uh, pretty cool knife. Um, historical accuracy out the window. Forget about that part. But uh, still, pretty cool knife. And uh, very similar to the uh, British two-piece class knife. Uh, with that said, um, stick around for some slides.
let me take just a second to thank you once again for dropping by and spending a few minutes here at Knife Chats with Tobias. I really do appreciate it, and I do appreciate any comments that you leave. So please uh, remember to give me that thumbs up, and also don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you'll know when the next episode is up and running. Thanks again for dropping by. Really do appreciate your time here.